Chapter 6, Part 1, Sharia. We looked at how contemporary Muslims are searching for a new center around which they can build an Islamic civilization. And we've seen that neither a political nor a historical center has fully succeeded in engaging the Muslim consciousness. Perhaps the most central concepts in Islam are those of divine command and human submission to that command and that provides a clue to a civilizational center. The very word Islam means human submission to the divine command, and a Muslim is one who submits. The word for the concept of divine command is Sharia, the same as the word for a path to a watering hole. Muslims understand this concept as the center of the revolution Islam created among the Bedouins and extended across the globe. And thus it is Sharia that is surely at the center of a modern Muslim civilization and identity. The problem, of course, is how to put the concept of divine command into action as real laws. The early expansion of Islam quickly brought multiple cultures and religions into the realm of Muslim authority. And with that diversity came a challenge for Muslim rulers. How do you govern a great diversity of peoples, most of whom the Quran has given a right to live under their own traditions, their own versions of divinely revealed law? And it is here that the concept of Sharia finds its real value because Sharia isn't bound to any particular culture. All people live under the divine command because all were created by God. For those, like Christians and Jews, who already knew that they lived under God's law, the concept of Sharia brought nothing new. It was functionally the same as the Torah or the teachings of Jesus. For those hearing for the first time that the God who created them also creates personal and social order, the concept of Sharia creates new possibilities for living productively and peacefully. And critically, even for polytheists who must convert to Islam, Sharia embraced all the existing social structures and their laws that were consistent with the teaching of the Quran. After all, since God had revealed God's self and God's command to all peoples, it is only logical that even the most forgetful of peoples would retain some remnant of Sharia in their social lives. Thus, Sharia, far from being a special possession of Muslims excluding all others, could unify the empires with its diverse cultures and traditions. At a practical level, the concept of Sharia also allowed for the governance of that empire. How? Rulers of large diverse states are required on a daily basis to create laws that will govern their people. Neither the Quran, which has a very limited number of actual laws, nor the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, equally limited, were sufficient to govern Islamic empire. Nor could the customary laws of the conquered peoples suffice. However, so long as the ruler made laws that were consistent with and did not contradict the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet, these laws too could be regarded as part of the divine command, part of Sharia. After all, Muslim rulers, at least theoretically, would seek to submit to God's command in their own lawmaking. So, it was God's command Sharia that became the basis for a new civilization of Islam that would burst the bounds of Arab culture and become global. A civilization governed by the traditions of many cultures and peoples, many religions, as long as they were consistent with God's command. An empire governed by laws made by men, so long as they submitted to God's command and then finally governed by those laws directly derived from the teaching of the Quran. So we can see the possibility that a civilizational center 
need not be political. It need not be social. It can be Sharia, the divine command. We'll look at that more specifically in the next video.